Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube. And today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand spanking new VW Passat Estate. And oh, what a car it is. Now this car's been around since the 70s. They've sold over 30 million units. Only other car in the VW range that has sold more is as you would expect, the VW Golf. Let's get underneath it, let's get in it, let's get around it and give you an honest and hopefully good evaluation of this car. Okay, first up, let's check under the bonnet what you actually get with the car, and it's a very neat compact engine. This is the two litre TSI, because this is the R-Line version, and that's what this one comes with. There are three different petrol engines, four different diesel engines, and between them, they vary between 120 brake horsepower all the way up to 274 horsepower. There is also a plug-in hybrid version of this, and that comes with an 85 kilowatt electric motor, that motor will give you an extra 55 kilometers of electrical travel. There you go. And that comes with a little 1.4 liter petrol engine developing around about 218 brake horsepower. It's a great bit of kit, this car, but over all the years, this is version eight we're on now. Has it changed a lot? Let's check it out. Let's have a walk around and let's get inside. A couple of noticeable differences between the old version, which has been around for the last four years, so we're now 2019 version. It's a slightly wider, slimmer grille here, and it's got a much nicer, lower profile splitter down the bottom here. And I think the general overall look of the car is rather, you know, it's more sort of rounded, a little bit more special. These are the latest Matrix lights, and they're all LED. With the VW Passat, you get a varying choice of rim size from 17 to 19 inches. I particularly like the black ones that you get in the 19 inch series. Check them out, they do look rather nice. Let's check out in the back how big this car is. And to open the boot, you just push the logo like that. And this particular car comes with the option of the assisted tail lift. Now inside here, you've got 650 litres of boot space. It's gigantic, absolutely massive. A couple of things you get, which I'm gonna show you around here. First of all, you've got the 12 volt adapter in here. You've got a couple of little plastic uh, shopping bag holders, which go over there. The good thing about this car is it has the option of having a proper space saver wheel. On this particular model, uh, we've just got the puncher repair outfit, which is pretty pointless to be honest with you. But you can get the space saver in there and it is an option. You've got a split level on this as well. So you can slide this back and then slide it back forward again and it will actually drop a little bit lower. It only gives you about another extra inch and a half of space but it can matter if you put things in here that are quite high you've got a lovely loading base here it's very very flat and even so there's no lip to get over and it's at a lovely knee height here so it makes it nice and easy if you're picking something heavy up just to turn and shift it straight in there this is a three-way split on the seat as well so you can move move the center seat all on its own. So if you've got a very long, thin load that you want to put in there, you can just drop that down. I'll do that in a second. I just want to show you, there's a couple of the, these are the ties over here. You've got places to put shopping and bits and pieces in the side. It's a very, very practical boot, but then you'd expect that because this is designed for families. Now, one of the lovely things I do like about this particular car, um, it has, well, it's rather rude, but I do like it. Here it comes, look at that. And this one, you can actually uh, oh, pull it up yourself. Look at that, your own tow bar. And then when you wanna get rid of it, just to lose it again, you just pull that again and it drops down like that. Bit of a, oh dear. Might need those little blue pills for that one. Um, and then that just pops up like that. It's perfect, isn't it? Let me show you the seats on another level. So either side over here, you pull this catch here. Watch this, I love this. Here we go, boosh, look at that, straight down. And the same the other side, boosh, and that's so easy. Now you've got 1,750 litres. It's humongous, you get a double mattress in here for God's sake. Let's check it out what it's like for the passengers and I'm gonna show you that middle section when it drops down as well when we get in there. Let's check out in the back. But before we do that, as I mentioned, let's see how easy it is just to pull that center column down. 
like that. It's just got a little clip on the top that you can just reach over. But look at that, that's absolutely amazing. You can get some really nice long loads in here. So, and you can also put the skis in here if you want, because they'll go in, they'll probably go this bit as well. There you go, nice and easy and very simple to put away. Before I pull the armrest down, let's jump in and actually see how comfy and how much space we get. Well, to be honest, there's bags of room in here. Tons of headroom. You've got a couple of nice LED uh, courtesy lights up the top there that you can adjust yourself. There's independent heating here, so you can actually turn it up or down and you can change the heating control on it. Inside here, there is a 12 volt adapter, but there are no USB ports. Mm. One 12 volt adapter, it's a shame could be better I'd like to see a couple of USBs in the back here in the center here well we do have a nice armrest as a double cup holder here it's extremely comfortable to sit here let's see whether it's comfortable for that third passenger because quite a high transmission tunnel here but once you're sat in the middle here yeah I'm absolutely it's wonderful it's amazing you could easily get three of us in here no problem at all really nice well done I like that um, let's check out what it's like to drive what kind of kit and what extra gizmos and bits and safety bits that you get with the new VW Passat Estate. Okay, so once we're out of the road in the VW Passat Estate, you're going to notice a world of difference from the old car. Um, there's so much now that has been put into this car. It's one of VW's best-selling cars, so they're going to put a lot of effort into the build quality and the finish on this car, that's for sure. They don't want to drop that if you're bringing out a new model. And this one really exemplifies that. It's loads of little bits I've noticed, like that little bit of glass in the corner there. Another manufacturer would just cover that in a bit of plastic, but no, it's nice. It's got a bit of glass in there. You know, just little things. But it has let itself down on one thing that I felt was synonymous with the Passat estate, or not just the estate, with the Passat itself, was the lovely clock in the middle. It's gone, why? You know, and it's been replaced with a black piece of plastic, a hazard warning button, and the word Passat, like I need reminding I'm driving a Passat. If I bought one, I know what I'm driving. It's just such a shame, it's right there in the middle. It used to be a really nice little clock. I can't believe they're penny pinching on a clock. It's just, there's got to be a reason. If you know the reason, send it in on the comment below. I'd like to know. But for the moment, I can't get, a, I cannot get my head around that. Such a shame. Anyway, let's talk about this car. First of all, we're going to talk about the instrument panel on the car, which can be changed using a view button here on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Um, it's a lovely setup. It is very, very intuitive as well. So you can move this to what you want. So I've got it set up at the moment. I've got the speedo on the right, and in the middle of the speedo, I've got the, the mileage that I've got left as fuel. To the left, I've got current mileage to the gallon, and that's the tachometer around it. And in the middle, I've got the speed that we're currently doing. And all of that really works for me. But if it doesn't work for you that way, you can set it all up yourself, and you do all that on the button here. So you just change the view however you want it. Um, the big, lovely big screen in the middle. I really do love these, uh, the Volkswagen touch screens that they're now using. It's so nice when you put your hand near it and it suddenly reacts. Initially it's a bit of a shock but then after that you get used to it and I love the map on these. The nav is so easy to use. It's brilliant. Below the screen you've got your heating controls. Again three very nice easy button. Big dials. So easy to use. You've got gloves on. This particular car is the R-Line model and we've got heated seats on it as well. That's really nice. That's just above in the buttons there. Just simple. So so simple to use. It's lovely. On the um, on next to the actual gear shift itself, this is the auto box, but it, it will be in the same position whether it was the manual or the auto. Uh, you've got your mode button at the top left hand side. Now the modes. There are four different modes. You've got eco mode speaks for itself then you've got normal mode which I call comfort mode um, and that pretty much sets the car up in its normal stability mode then you go into sport mode and at that point the instrument cluster here changes to red uh, you get a much sportier feel you get more a little bit more power behind the, the end you know you feel that power build up you get a little bit more responsive on the steering wheel and obviously you get a harder ride the, the dampers are clamping down, etc. It's a really nice little setup on the sports mode. I prefer to drive it in the sports mode all the time. And then there is an individual mode, so you can actually set up best bits of what you like. So if you want comfort mode for the steering, you can have that, and you want sports mode for the engine, but you want eco mode, for example, you can set all that up and just do it yourself by using the lovely big touchscreen here. 
and it'll give you, you know, when you first buy one of these, great fun setting everything up, and then you might change it all. Um, there's a double cup holder in the middle here, which is very handy. Um, the actual cubby box behind me, a little bit small, but it does have a USB in there. Um, there's a couple of USBs actually, so it's quite handy. And all in all, this car is extremely comfortable. Now, let's talk a couple of basic statistics, which I know we all love. First of all, let's talk miles to the gallon. So VW are claiming 35 to 40. We are currently getting 28.7. I think on a decent run, which I haven't really done on this, it's mostly been sort of urban driving around town. Um, you'd probably be up in that ballpark, 34, 35. But yeah, it's about, it's about all right. And this is a two litre TSI engine in this particular car. So I think that's pretty good. It's, it's almost on the money. Uh, price wise, well, we start around 27,000 pounds and we go all the way up to 45,000 pounds. There are three different trim levels. So you have Passat level, which is the entry level. You have business level, which is the mid range level. And then you have elegance or elegance, however you want to say it. If you're French, it's elegance. I like that. Um, that is your top level trim level. In between that, you get GT and you also get R line, which is the one we're in at the moment. And then there also is an all track version, which is an off road version of the Passat. And it's remarkable according to some of the videos that I've seen and some of the feedback that I've heard from other journalists. So that's well worth a look in. And don't forget, I mentioned the hybrid when we were under the bonnet earlier. Um, that's also well worth a look at as well with that electrical energy as part of the part of the package. Um, speaking of packages, well, this car comes with a fantastic package called Traffic Assist. Now, Traffic Assist, um, it's existed before on the Passat, but it was um, what they call a passive system. This is the new active system. And the way it works is quite simple. So you have a camera up there, which is acting like a, a radar, and that is looking for road signs. It's looking for different conditions in the road itself, and it is sending that information back to the computer which when this car becomes autonomous will also use the GPS that's built into it to actually drive autonomously and slow you down when you come to a speed limit for example but where it has already proved itself is on sharp bends it can detect roundabouts I mean I can't show you for legal reasons take my hands off the wheel and go round and round that is just not allowed at the moment but I've seen this car doing it on the test track and it is simply phenomenal and that is called traffic assist it's a brand new system by VW and it's going to be going out across the range of all the VW cars eventually obviously we're going to turn autonomous in the near future these cars are set up and they're geared for it safety systems wise well you've got lane assist on here auto detects whether you're moving out of your lane you've got uh, lane distance selection as well you've got on the left hand side here you've got your cruise control that's very easy and simple to set up on here as well everything else is already built in so um, you've got lane change assist as well so if there's a car in front and the car and this car realizes that you're not going over the speed limit it will pull you out into another lane and allow you to overtake the car if you so wish um, there's in town emergency braking that detects if there's you know a child or somebody runs out a cat or a dog or a motorcycle is crossed if your brain isn't quick enough this car will actually break quicker than you can think it's quite amazing when it actually does it scary but quite amazing um, there's park assist as well it'll park itself there's trailer assist so if you're parking your horse box and you're not very good at reversing this car will do it for you absolutely stunning makes the horses laugh according to the advert as well um, well, to be honest, we've covered pretty much everything. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed driving this car. It's immensely comfortable. It's got a great sound system on it as well. Um, I did forget just to mention that the uh, blind spot mirrors are also, well, you know what I would say about them, essential, absolutely essential. It's got a great field of vision in this car. It's super smooth. Go out, have a test drive, make an evaluation yourself. But I'm saying good for the money. I love it. You've been watching me, AJ the player. I thank you for watching. And um, don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. And next week, we'll have another car for you. Guys, safe motoring. Catch you next week.